Welcome to the Jungets Games tutorial playthrough for Tarji. In this video, I'll be showing you how to play the game as we go through the first round, and if you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough, you can find a link for that down below in the description or by clicking the I up there in the top corner. Now before we move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles, because I might make mistakes as we play through the game, and that lets me put corrections directly on the screen where you should be able to see them. Now I would also like to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because it was selected by the contributing producer level supporters of this channel. Now each month they can pick one bonus video, and this is the one for January, and if you'd like to learn more about that, then go to patreon.com slash jongetsgames to do so. Now at this point, let's talk a little bit about Tarji. So this is a two-player only game where each person is going to be placing out their Tarji workers around the border of a grid of cards. Now the locations where you put your Tarji down are going to give you actions, but the intersection between your Tarji in the middle of the grid are also going to give you action spots. So this game is all about getting good actions around the outside while also targeting great ones in the middle and of course trying to block your one opponent. Now, I will describe how all of this stuff works in greater detail while we are playing, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool perks, like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month, and again, this is one of those videos. Alright, let's now jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our two different players. Now today, we will be playing as the white player over here, and you'll notice that our opponent, the blue player, currently has the starting player amulet. This means they can take the first action of the game, and the way this works is they're going to take one of their three Tarji tokens, and they're going to place it out onto one of the border cards around the outside. Now there are a few restrictions for this, and I'll explain those soon on our turn, but for the moment we can see that our opponent has decided that they want to put their figure right over there. With the blue player's single placement completed, they are now done with their turn, because you don't perform any of these actions until all three of your Tarji tokens are placed out onto the board. This means it's now time for us to place, and when it comes to what cards we can go down onto, there are several different restrictions. The first is that you are never allowed to place onto the corners, and the second restriction is you cannot place onto any of the nine in the middle. That means the standard placement spots are going to be these three on the sides, and the three at the top and the bottom. Now, in addition to the restrictions that I've already stated, you are also not allowed to place your new Tarji down onto a spot where any other Tarji is, whether that be your opponent's or your own, and you are also not allowed to place down onto a spot where the neutral robber token is. Now that always starts the game right over here, and the final restriction is that you cannot place opposite one of your opponent's Tarji tokens. So that means our opponent placed here, which means this spot is not legal for us, and that spot is obviously not legal because the robber is there. This means we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 options for us to place our Tarji token on this turn. Well, after considering the options, I think we should place right up here. Now obviously there are quite a few icons and actions out here that I have not explained just yet, and I will get to those relatively soon. So now that we have placed our Tarji token, it's now time for our blue opponent to go. They obviously have two more of these, so they can now place this onto one of the legal spots around the outside of the board. Well, the blue player has decided to go right over here, and that is legal because even though you're not allowed to place opposite your opponent, you are allowed to place opposite the robber. Now this means it's time for us to place once again. But before we make our choice, I think it's now time to talk about these two tribe markers that we have in our area. Now as I said before, we are going to keep placing Tarji tokens until each of us have three of them out, and then once that happens, we are each going to place one of our tribe markers at the intersection point on these middle cards between our Tarji tokens. So as you can see, the blue player has a Tarji token here and here, so their current intersection point is that card right over there. That means, at the moment, they are anticipating putting a tribe token right over there, and the tribe token lets you take the action of that specific card there in the middle. So with that in mind, we want to consider what actions we want on the outside of the map, but also what intersections might be possible with the Tarji tokens that we've already placed. Now, I like the idea of trying to take this card right over here. It says that we pay one fewer goods when we play additional Oasis cards later on in the game. Now, I haven't talked about buying these cards just yet, but having a discount going throughout the game for a specific type of card is obviously good. 
So I think for this turn, let's place right over here because that means our tribe token will get placed down onto this spot here. Well, blue is next and after considering their options, they're gonna place right up here and this means it's time for us to place the final Tarji token of this first round of the game. Now, obviously, our options have become somewhat more limited, and I think let's just place right up over here. Now, as soon as we do that, you'll notice that all three of the Tarjis have been placed out for both of the players. So now we can put our tribe tokens out. Now, this means we can look to our intersections. We have one right over here, and we have another one right over there. Now, our blue opponent has an intersection on this spot, and they also have one right over here from these two Tarji tokens. At this point, it's now time to perform our actions, and the way this works is the player with the amulet will perform all of their actions, and then after that, the other player will perform theirs. Now, this means the blue player can take actions, and when you do these actions, you can perform them in any order of your choice. Now, the blue player has decided they are going to start by taking resources, and as you can see, this spot right over here has a salt, which means this location is going to generate a single salt for them. Now, over here, this is a pepper location, so as they pull off these Tarji tokens, they can obviously take the benefits, so in this case, that is a pepper, and then down here, they're going to gain yet another pepper from the supply. Now, as I said before, these tribe tokens for each player also count as action spots, and you may have noticed that there are resource icons here in the middle, as well as on the perimeter. Now, in this case, the blue player is on one of these, and the way these central cards differ from the outside ones is that the central cards get removed when activated, whereas the outside cards will always be out in this order and face up. So in this case, the blue player can now take another pepper as well as another salt from the supply. Next up, they have to discard the goods card that was just activated over here into a discard pile. Now this obviously brings their tribe marker back, and before they take another action, they have to fill this spot in. Now as you may have noticed, there are two types of cards in this game. There are goods cards and tribe cards. Now whenever you refill, you're going to use the other type of card as compared to the one that was just taken. So the blue player just activated a goods card, which means a tribe card will be placed over here face down. Now this will be flipped face up as we go into the next round, but that's not going to happen until all actions have been performed. Now at this point, the blue player has one more action left, and that's right over here on a tribe card. Now what they're going to do is pull this card back, and they are going to do one of two things with it. Now as you can tell, this is a tribe card because of the back, and the first thing that they can do is simply put this card into their hand. Now when they do this, they are reserving it to play it later on in the game, or they could immediately, when they pull it back, pay the cost that is listed in the top right corner in order to put this down into their tableau. Now, in this case, they have to spend two dates and a single coin. And as you can see, each player starts the game with two of each resource and a coin. So they can afford this, and they've decided to go ahead and spend these resources. And now they can add this card into their tableau. Now, the way this works is you put this card into the leftmost open spot into one of the rows in your tableau. And it's worth noting that you are never allowed to have more than three overall rows in front of you. Now, you are also not allowed to have more than four cards within a row, so they are essentially establishing a grid that will flow out from here. Now, it's worth noting that you can add cards into new rows before you've completed a row, but I would also like to emphasize that you are not allowed to move these cards around your tableau once they are placed. Now, there is a single card in the game that lets you move these, but you probably should not lean on getting that card because it might not even show up in the game. Now, the final thing that I'd like to mention about these rows that we are building is that at the end of the game, we will get bonus points based off of the type of cards in these rows. Now, there are five different types of cards in the game, and this one is the Targia type. And if at the end of the game, you have a full row of four cards that are all the exact same type of card, then you will get four bonus points. Now, if instead you have a full row with four different types of cards in it, then you will get two bonus points. And that is all of the potential bonus points that players will get as they build out their rows. Well, before we move on, I figure let's take a closer look at this card that the blue player just bought. Now, down in the bottom corner of these cards, there are these victory point symbols. And that means that this card is worth two points to the blue player at the end of the game. Now, some cards have text in the middle and some don't, and in this case, this one says that each turn where they get at least one date from a goods card, they will receive one more date. Now, this means they are incentivized to gather more dates, and that's probably pretty good considering currently they don't have any more dates. 
All right, the final thing that the blue player has to do to finish out that action is to draw another card from one of these stacks. Now, the card that they removed was a tribe card, which means they have to place the opposite type down, which is going to be a goods card. Now, at this point, the blue player has performed all of their actions, and that means it's now time for us to go. Well, I figure we'll start off simply by pulling this Targi back in order to generate a single date good, and this Targi is going to give us a salt. Now, at this point, we have three more actions available to us, and I think let's pull this card back right over here that had our tribe token on it. Now, before we go any farther, let's just go ahead and put a goods card right over there to fill in that spot. And now, in order to play this, we have to get rid of two salt as well as one pepper. Now, we, of course, started the game with those resources, and now we can add this into our tableau. Well, we can put that right over here in the leftmost spot of a new row. And now, for the rest of the game, we pay one fewer good whenever we play additional Oasis cards. Now, this is the Oasis type, so obviously we are gunning to try and get more of these built out, and we would like to put them in this row because if we get four of these cards, then that is worth four additional points to us at the end of the game. Now, I do want to mention that this says we pay one fewer good, and these tokens right over here are goods. Now, that means these coins are not counted as goods, so we will not get a discount from them, and in general, coins are harder to come by. All right, we still have two actions left, and I think our next one should be activating the Caravan. Now, the way this works is we simply draw the top one of these goods cards, and we get whatever is showing on the backside. Now, in this case, we can choose any one of these three different types of goods, and I'm laughing because, of course, that is what this action is going to be for us down here. Now, this effectively means we can choose one type of good twice, and if we look down over here, we currently don't have much salt or pepper. So I figure we will take a salt with this one right over there, and that has finished out that action. So now we can do this final one, which lets us choose one of these, and let's just go well-rounded and pick up a pepper from the goods pile. Now the card we just took was a goods card, so we can put a tribe card right over here. Well, at this point, we are now done with our actions, and at the end of each player's turn, they have to check to make sure they do not have more than 10 goods, and that they do not have more than 3 of these coins. Now, I forgot to mention that at the end of the blue player's turn, and as you can tell, they have no coins and 9 goods, so they are under the limit, and as far as we are concerned, we have 7 goods and 1 coin, so we are also fine. Now, if either of us had more than the limit, then we would just have to discard down until we hit that limit of 10 goods and or 3 gold. Well, now that both players are done with their turn, the round is now coming to a close, and with that, we have to do a couple of things. The first thing is we have to reveal all of these face-down cards, and then the second thing we do is pass the starting amulet over to the other player so that they can start things off in the next round. Well, speaking of that, it's now time to go into the second round of the game, and the way we show that is by moving the robber marker once clockwise around the outside. Now, at this point, we could start the second round, but I think I'm going to save that for the extended playthrough. Now, at this point, I haven't discussed a few of these actions, so let's go through those now. Well, let's start with the trader. Now, the way this works is you can get rid of three identical goods to take a coin, and you can get rid of two identical goods to take another good of your choice. Now, you are allowed to do this as many times as you want for a single action. Now, I do want to point out at this point that the backside of every one of these cards has a text version of what that action does, but for this playthrough, I think I will be going with the iconography sides. Next up, there is the Fata Morgana. Now, this is a type of mirage, and what this action does is it lets you take one of your tribe tokens that's already out here in the middle of the area, and you can move it onto another unoccupied revealed card. So that means if you don't like one of your intersections, you can place this down onto another spot, as long, of course, as you or your opponent were not already on that one you want to go to. Now, after that, there is the Silversmith. Now, this one says that one time you can get rid of two identical goods to take a victory point. You can instead get rid of four identical goods to take three victory points, or you can get rid of one coin for two points or two coins for four points. So again, you can choose one of these four options to turn goods or coins into points. After that, the next card to talk about is Tribal Expansion. Now, the way this works is when you activate this, you will draw the top card from this tribe stack, and you will then do one of three things with it. The first thing is if you can afford it and you'd like to play it, you can play it right into your tableau. The second thing is if you do not currently have a card in your hand, you can put this into your hand. And the third thing is you can just discard this face up next to the stack. 
Now, it's worth noting that you can never have more than one card in your hand. So if you already have a card in your hand, you cannot do this middle option. Well, speaking of the hand, let's now talk about the final action spot, which is the Noble. Now, when you perform this action, you can do one of these two options. And this left one says that you can play the card that is in your hand, and then you, of course, have to spend the applicable resources for it. Now, the other option lets you discard the card in your hand over to the stack next to the tribe pile, and this is the only way that you can actually get rid of that card in your hand. Well, we've now discussed all of the actions in the game, and I'm sure you are now curious about what's going on with these raid cards over in the corners. Now, these are activated when the robber reaches those spots, and then players in turn order will have to choose one of these two penalties. So, this first raid will cost a single good or a point, the second raid is two goods or a point, then it gets worse to losing three goods or two points, and finally this one is losing one coin or three victory points. Now after the raid happens, the robber will move on to the next card, so it will not stay over here in the corners, and that means the raids will happen after the third, sixth, ninth, and twelfth rounds of the game. Alright, it's now time to talk about how this game will end. Now that's going to come from one out of two different possibilities, and the first one is if at the end of a round, either player has 12 cards in their tableau, then the game will come to an end right there. Now instead, the other way the game could end is if the robber makes it all the way around this track and this final raid is activated, then the game will end immediately after that. Once the game is over, players will start adding up their points. Now those are going to come from several different parts of the game. The first area is just having point tokens in front of them. Now at the start of the game, each player has four of these, and you might lose some to these raids, and you could also gain them from certain cards, like this one right out here, which is a goods card that just gives you a point when it is activated. After that, players will get points from the cards over in their tableau, and that will come from the point icons in the bottom right corners, and some of the cards also give other end game victory point conditions. For instance, this tribe card right over here says, at the end of the game, this player will get one point for every two of the camp style cards that they have in their display. Now this icon right here is for the camp type of card, and this one is for the camel riders. So players can develop even more victory point conditions based off of the cards that they put down into their tableaus. Now there is one more way that players will get points at the end of the game, and that involves the row bonuses that I've already talked about. Now again, that is going to give players four points if they have a full row of four cards of the same exact type, and that will give players two points if they have a full row of four cards, each of which is a different type of card. Once players add all of this up, the one with the most victory points will be the winner. Well, at this point, I've now taught you most of the rules to the game, which means the tutorial is coming to a close. Now, if you'd like to watch the rest of the playthrough all the way to the end, then you can find a link for that down below in the description or by clicking the I up there in the top right corner. And I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Tarji. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.